So we're talking about option value and specifically intrinsic and extrinsic value, and we'll touch on put call parity as well. We kind of talked about that yesterday with our spreads discussion, but this is more about just the options value and 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 kind of understanding what your option position is when it goes in the money versus being out of the money. And so we've got a, two little examples here, just a couple conversations that we can have about option value. Love it. So on the first slide here, so when you when you have a position that goes in the money and this applies to inversions or just naked one sided trades, like if you're naked a put, you can kind of flip this and, and consider it if you're naked a call. But your position and if you're opening the position, the, this position and the value of this position as, you know, extrinsic value, that's the value above whatever the parity is and that intrinsic value being the 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 true value of that option at expiration, if it was right now, is basically stock, right? So when you have an in the money put, or or if you sell it to open, or if you sell it out of the money and then the put goes in the money, your position is now long stock short call. It turns into a cover call position from an extrinsic value standpoint. If you're opening a put, and in the first example, like if you're selling to open this put, it's $10 in money, you're selling it for $15, you're not getting $15 of value. You're getting $5 of value. The, the remaining $10 is that potential intrinsic value that you need from a directional move in the stock. And what I mean by that is is in the second description here, but just looking at the first one, your risk on this position is 95 bucks, right? So if you're if the stock's at a the stock's at 100, you sell the put, you know, at at 110, you're getting $5 for the for extrinsic value. You have your risk is if the stock goes to zero. The minimum value of this position is if the option expires out of the money, you'd keep that full $15. But that $15 is made up of the credit, which is the extrinsic value, or in this example, I'm using it as the extrinsic value, plus whatever that intrinsic value is. So you, you, have, you need a move in the stock in the same light as if you have a cover call and you need the stock to move up to the call to realize that value. And that's what we're highlighting here. That in the money put, the intrinsic part of that equation is long stock. And the extrinsic part of that equation is the short call. So your the value of this position is synthetically the same as a cover call position. It's just uh, you know a different setup. It's the same exact position. Yep. And this is, you know, we'll, you'll see us doing this every once in a while where instead of buying shares and selling it out of the call, we'll sell an in-the-money put, assuming that liquidity is there and we uh, can get an in and out of the trade easily. And the reason why we might choose the top image over the bottom is just because of buying power efficiency yeah. and the margin accounts. But it, there's no difference in the trade. And like Nick said, if you're selling this put, 10 points in the money and the stock doesn't move at all, you don't you don't see that $15 go to zero. You'll see that $15 go to $10 yeah. and that extra premium over the intrinsic value is your extrinsic value premium. And like Nick said, again, it's the exact same position as if you were to buy 100 shares and sell the, the same strike out of the money call, you're still gonna pick up that $5 credit. It's just a matter of how you are looking at the position uh, in this, if we're, Bring this back to what we talked about yesterday with how if you're selling an out of the money put spread for a credit and you compare that to buying an in the money call spread for a debit, you might be collecting the put spread or selling the put spread for a dollar with a risk of four on a five dollar wide spread where the in the money call spread you're buying, you're buying that for four dollars with a max profit potential of five uh, of a dollar if it reaches five dollars of value. Same exact trade, just the difference between debit versus credit, and here it's the same thing. Are you picking up $15 up front because you're selling that intrinsic value in conjunction with the extrinsic? Or on the bottom image, are you buying the shares of stock and are you selling that call for $5 out of the money where to reach that $15 max profit, you need the shares to go up? Just like with the short put, you need the shares to go up above your short put to make the same amount of money. Yes, and when you when you consider when you when you look at your positions and it, specifically the in the money positions in this light, it it 
makes more sense why we roll down those call spreads or roll up the put spreads and manage those strangle positions because your your out of the money options they have no you know it's all extrinsic value once the option gets in the money now you've got a stock component to your position whether it's there right now or not like meaning like you're not getting assigned on that position it's not like selling that put you're now automatically long stock but you're synthetically long stock via that intrinsic value so if you think about that from the situation of rolling down a call like okay yeah you're getting closer to the to the stock price but you're long the stock via that in the money put and when you think about your position from that light it makes it easier to say okay i'm going to roll down the call and pick up 10 or 15 deltas because my position is long 100 shares of stock mm -hmm. so jumping on over to the next slide here obviously we've used this one a couple times but when you think of it this way it, it and talking about in the money options as stock positions it's it's easy to understand why the inversion and selling to open inverted positions doesn't make sense, right? So just like in the first example, if you're selling an in-the-money in call and you're selling an in-the-money put, you're synthetically short stock and long stock at two different strikes. Those cancel out, that's zero. And whatever that intrinsic value that you're selling, that's value that you're, you're, you're never gonna be able to capture. You're always going to pay that value out. This position can only trade for a minimum of $10. There's no, there's, it cannot go lower than this. And it's because your short stock at, you know, the 95 strike, your long stock at the 105 strike, net net, that's zero dollars in value. And that and that's the, the 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 point here is that these inverted strangles, while it looks like you're getting a high credit or much bigger credit than what you would get without them out of the money strangle, the value of those positions is the exact same. And that's because you're you're trading one position that has you know 100 shares of stock in on both sides for an out of the money position that has no shares of stock and that's the difference in value of these two positions mm -hmm. and uh when it comes down to <clears throat> inversions and regular trades like this another thing to point out is if you're starting with an out of the money strangle versus an inverted strangle you're going to have much better liquidity with the out of the money options speaking to what we talked about yesterday uh, so it's not something we'll ever open with, but it is something we can arrive at with yeah. management of a strangle or a straddle. Um, but again, just realize that when you go inverted, that is intrinsic value that and that is your new minimum value. Your, your minimum value is no longer zero if the options expire out of the money because they won't. Your put yeah. and call if they're One inverted. One of them has to be in the money. Correct. Yes. Um, so just keep that in mind and don't be fooled by the illusion of this huge credit if you're selling in the money options where, yes, if you get a directional move, if you sell an in the money put or an in the money call, that is going to come out of the option value. But if you have an inverted trade like this, it will not. The minimum value is ten dollars. If you've collected fifteen dollars up front or you've collected fifteen dollars along the way, your max profit is five dollars if the stock stays between your strikes. But that's because you're going to pay back ten dollars to close the trade and you had collected fifteen dollars through the cycle of that trade. Good stuff. And finally, we're going to talk about a little bit about parity and, and how this comes into play here. So one of the reasons that you might perceive a ARB or a potential risk-free value is because of dividend risk. And we'll walk through this example when we get to the when we get to the platform, but the dividend is going to be priced into the options for that position. And you can you can see the the dividend being priced in if you look at a parity trade for the stock, meaning being synthetically long stock via an option position and selling stock at the same time. That transaction should, should trade at zero if there is no value coming down the line, right? So if you're long a stock via a short put and a long call, and that could be at any strike, it's gonna be 100 deltas, it's a synthetic stock position, it'll trade at parity of the stock. If you could buy that position and then sell stock and have a a net value there, that's risk-free value. And that doesn't exist, and that's because uh, there is the dividend coming up that'll that'll offset that perceived free value. And we'll, we'll go through an example of that as well. The other situation 
is if a stock is hard to borrow. So the value of being short that stock is more expensive, right? So if something is hard to borrow and it costs you, let's say a dollar per day, just as a, or $10 a day to hold a short position in whatever the stock is, how would that reflect in the options? Well, if you're trying to be short the stock via long put, that's gonna be a more expensive put because the market knows that it's expensive to, to carry short delta here, short static delta, and so you're gonna pay for that in the options. So that comes into play and that's why sometimes you'll see, you know, and we go back to like the GME example of, the, of people trading the boxes there and getting assigned on the short call, those boxes trade for above parity because there is a cost to carry the stock. So the next day you get signed on the short call, your short stock, you're paying that carry cost. That carry cost is, is going to be more than whatever ARB you perceived to be built in there because there's there's always a discount mechanism to, to options and trading. So you're always going to have some sort of um, you know offset if you think there is something that you're not you know, that that's free money. If you think there's free money, there isn't. And it, it comes in, you know, it's usually one of these two situations. Mm -hmm. And the, the carry cost thing is a, is a, is a big one for Friday positions. Cause if you get, if you have that position on and you trade it on Friday and you get assigned at, which happens after the close, you have three days of carry costs. You have Saturday, Sunday, Monday. So if you're looking at something you know, the, on a Friday and you're like, oh, it's, you know, free money. And then you get assigned and now you have three days of carry costs. And, you know, if you're at 100 percent or more, or whatever the, the number is, 10 percent, 20 percent, doesn't matter what the carry cost is. It's expensive to hold that for th for three full days. Mm hmm.